Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about my favorite object, Titan. This is the moon of Saturn that I personally always refer to as the most Earth-like object outside of Earth. And we'll talk about a new discovery coming from here when trying to identify some of the lakes on the surface of this moon. Let's discuss this and welcome to What Am I? So when it comes to choosing the most favorite object in the solar system, for me it's always about Saturn and specifically about one of the moons of Saturn known as Titan. The moon itself is relatively far from Saturn, you can actually see it, it's this tiny tiny object right there in the middle and Saturn itself um, is here. And what makes it so unusual and so interesting of course is that it possesses a lot of things that our planet Earth possesses. There are things like the liquid cycle here, there is a lot of uh, interaction between the atmosphere and the liquids on the surface and at the same time it has very thick atmosphere even thicker than planet earth but before we go and try to settle this object you also have to remember that it's really cold here and the liquids here are not water there are things like methane and ethane and if we were to peer beneath this atmosphere we would discover quite a lot of various lakes and a lot of i guess sea-like objects but more recently, as some of these scientists were looking at these lakes, they realized that some of them didn't really make sense. A lot of these lakes had very unusual structure that would indicate a very peculiar origin. And more specifically, what some of the lakes here indicate is that the actual rim where the water ends and the surface begins are way too vertical and way too steep. It's a little bit easier to see if we zoom in here, and you'll notice how these rims are way, way too vertical. Now, by the way, this is actually not an actual image, this is an artist interpretation of what's happening here, but the images that we do have are very precise and very thorough, because the Cassini mission that was in this region for a very long time was able to take quite a lot of radar data over many many years that it spent here. And on top of this, Titan is the first outer solar system object that we were able to film with Huygens probe that landed on the surface many many years ago. So this is what the actual imagery looks like, this is not a simulation, this is not CGI as many people claim. These are the real images that you're looking at and what the surface of this moon looks like. Now the color here is false, it's not actually that orange, mostly because it's really dark here so they had to use very specific cameras to film this. And the darkness here is actually caused by the super super low amount of light that this object receives. So first of all, because Saturn is so far away, it only receives about one one hundredth of sunlight that we get here on Earth. But at the same time, due to the very thick um, atmosphere of Titan, that amount of light decreases dramatically. So if you were to stand on the surface of Titan in the middle of the day, you would only get a very small fraction of total sunlight we get here on Earth it would most likely be even darker than um, what you get from the moon in the middle of the night here on Earth. But anyway, here we go, here's an actual landing and what the actual surface looks like as well. Some of the first um, ice rocks that we were able to see, and lastly you're going to see the shadow of the parachute as it lands. So once we were able to film this and once we took all of the other radar imagery from uh, Titan, we were able to uh, create a map of the surface here and start even mapping um, specific ridges of various lakes. And it just so happens that some of the lakes in the North Pole here, and really this lake right here known as Winnipeg Lacus, or is it Lacus? Anyway, it just means Lake Winnipeg, which actually is the same name we have for a lake here on Earth. Uh, so this lake here does seem to have these unusually steep rims, and um, it's very difficult to explain how this was formed. However, we do have something similar here on Earth. These are known as karst lakes or karstic lakes, and as you can see, they do also have these vertical rims. And we know that these form when water dissolves the rock itself, it actually dissolves the limestone, and as it dissolves the limestone, it slowly gets lower and lower in the ground and forms these vertical rims. So in some sense, it's possible that maybe the um, methane and ethane liquid methane on the surface of Titan dissolved some of this ice rock that was formed by water ice and created similar vertical rims. But there is, however, another explanation that a lot of scientists are now investigating. Because unfortunately, unlike these lakes here on Earth, 
the ones we've detected on Titan have much steeper and more pronounced rims that we can't really explain with a simple idea of methane dissolving the ice underneath. Something else must have happened. And specifically for some of the smaller lakes like this one, this is uh, the same lake I showed you before, it's a lot more likely that something must have come from within. In other words, there must have been some kind of a large explosion, almost like a volcanic eruption, that created these very steep rims we're observing. By investigating the shapes and morphology of these um, rims around this lake, the scientists behind this paper proposed that it must have been some kind of a really large volcanic explosion that created these much smaller lakes. Their size is roughly around um, 10 to maybe 20 kilometers in diameter, so there is a possibility that they were created by a very large explosion, and they believe the explosion is also the best explanation for why these rims are so much taller than what we expected them to be. And at the same time, it gives us an idea that maybe Titan is also a very actively volcanic object. Just like Io, it might possess several volcanoes uh, that once in a while erupt and create these really unusual lakes, but also maybe other conditions. But what could have possibly exploded and what could have been released into the atmosphere of Titan? Well, today we know that Titan's atmosphere is very enriched in nitrogen, just like the one here on Earth, but here there's even more nitrogen. And when it gets colder on Titan, this nitrogen can become rain and then fall onto the surface and sip through the water ice and eventually get deposited underneath, inside of the um, ice crust. And this can maybe form nitrogen lakes or nitrogen-like liquid formations underneath the surface. However, once in a while, uh, especially I guess when Saturn comes closer to the Sun or when Titan starts experiencing its own version of the summer, some of the methane, which is of course a very powerful greenhouse gas, can suddenly create a lot of warmth on the Moon and this may, in turn, initiate a kind of an explosive reaction where the nitrogen that was inside of the Titan's um, surface, or underneath the surface that is, suddenly explodes and uh, releases a tremendous amount of nitrogen into the atmosphere, which then restarts the cycle again. Now, we believe that this is a pretty good explanation for what we're seeing here. We know that there's a lot of nitrogen, we know that there's a lot of circulation of various atmospheric gases, and we also know that um, these particular lakes seem to have been formed somewhat violently, or at least it appears so. And if all of this is correct, it means that Titan is definitely a lot closer to Earth than we imagined. At the same time, this gives us an opportunity to study Saturn in more detail and discover what happens when these eruptions do occur, or if they somehow give Saturn another ring, because it probably releases a lot of material into the um, outer regions of the Saturn system as well. And some of this material might, of course, create another ring. Now, we might be able to discover the signs of these previous eruptions if we look around the orbit of Titan, and we might even find particles in this region. We haven't looked yet, but there is a mission coming up in a few years known as Dragonfly that's going to be launching in 2026 and we'll be delivering this beautiful helicopter to study Titan in a lot more detail. And this is maybe when we finally discover something interesting here and possibly even life? Because a lot of scientists do think that maybe there is some kind of a life happening here after all. But anyway, even though we normally don't talk about Titan too much, I definitely think it's one of the more exciting objects out there and creates an opportunity for us to one day create an amazing colony somewhere else that will be quite self-sustainable as well because there is a lot of potential resources on this moon. Although until we discover more about Titan and uh, until we discover more about these unusual leaks, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper in the description below and subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out and as always, bye bye.